guys, so today I am talking about Emergent. It's a new show on ABC. It's a supernatural mystery thriller. I guess they're kind of classifying it as a mystery thriller, and I think it's an interesting show because it's a show that we have no idea what's going on, that we kind of have to figure out as we go. I was thinking about something that I wanted to recap, and this one really drew me in really quickly. But we have to be really cautious about this show because ABC has a history of canceling supernatural and sci-fi TV shows because I feel like they've tried to recreate that magic which was found, that lightning in a bottle that was found when they did Lost and it's just a different time and the way we consume media these days is different. I feel like shows like this generally do better either on a streaming platform or on cable networks. So I'm a little bit cautious here. I feel like often what happens is these shows do not pull in the ratings. And a lot of that, that niche, niche audience, isn't necessarily network TV, primetime network TV viewers. I feel like a lot of hit shows that are on primetime are very formulaic in a sense that it's cop dramas or sitcoms or reality shows that draw people in. It's really hard to find unique shows that are on primetime dramas at night. But ABC and all the other networks have produced a lot of flops since Lost and they've tried to recreate Lost several times and it just doesn't fly. That being said, I really enjoy this show. I think that the characters are really good and I think having a cast that's instantly likable, such as this cast and these characters, it has like almost a family aspect to it which can draw these types of wide range audiences in despite of the supernatural thriller mystery element of it. So without further ado, I'm gonna go on my webcam and we're just gonna go through the whole episode. The show begins with a rather long but very gripping teaser. It starts off in what is Long Island, although it's not clear right away that it's taking place in Long Island. It actually looks a little bit more urban Queens here. So maybe it's a little bit closer to Queens. The lights flicker as we see. They had this nine minutes up as a promo, which is very, very smart. We see Allison Tolman's character sleeping and the power is flickering. And we see this image. Now, uh, this image appears later on in the episode. We see this type of weird figures that is some type of code or means something. And whoa, hello. What in the world? Okay, the clothespin went flying to the wall. Where is there a lighthouse? Is this the very end of Long Island? Is this Montauk? And the lights go out. Hear some noises. It sounds like a plane is passing overhead or maybe crashed. That's an interesting way to start a show because when the power goes out, there's always a little bit of a mystery of, hey, the power went out, why? Was there a storm? Did someone hit a transformer? Was there an explosion? Are aliens coming? Did not pay my electricity bill. There's that too, <laughs> I've been there. So they go out to the porch, they see some type of light coming from the sky. It really does look like a UFO has landed, but it's actually we learn very soon it's a plane crash. The lights come back on. She gets called into work. You see right here, she's an officer because she has a law enforcement vehicle right there. We're taken to a scene at the beach and this is definitely a plane crash. This is some type of passenger plane. The closest airport is not missing anyone. So they're not quite sure where the plane took off from. We see a girl hiding behind the dunes who is seemingly unharmed. There's a shameless plug for Toy Story. So we have a mystery child, a mystery crash, some type of weird signals, magnets. Bitch! Magnets! She calls the paramedics to come and check her out. It doesn't appear that she was in any type of plane crash. However, she does have some type of memory loss or amnesia. And the child says she wants to go home, but she thinks home is with our girl, the officer. So the doctor is hoping her memory will return to her in the next day or so. She trusts her in the care of Joe. There's arguing in the hallway. This is NTSB and they are there to come and take the girl apparently. Now we soon learn that these guys are not really NTSB or maybe they're like a bad arm of NTSB because when all this goes down, the girl disappeared. NTSB is at the crash site, but it's not the same dudes. Nobody knows who those first guys were. Uh, so the water is going sideways which makes no sense and also her car won't start. And she looks in the back and the child is there saying, don't be mad in a very creepy way, kind of. See that? That's in the opening. That looks very similar to what was on the alarm clock radio. So of course the officer, Officer Joe Evans, brings the child home with her to her house where she appears to live with her 
father. Doesn't take her very long to get acquainted with her family. As you can see, she is already bonding with her real daughter and they decide to give her a name, kind of like she's a lost puppy because she can't remember her real name. They name her Piper. Joe leaves the child, Piper, her new child, <laughs> in the care of her father while she goes off to investigate further what happened in the crash fight. Oh, we have a little bit of a sassy teenager who's happy because she finally gets a little sister since her mom and dad aren't together anymore. Ouch. There's also some strange black SUV. We also learn that Joe's father is undergoing treatment for cancer. When he tells Piper that these pills are making him better, she says, no, they're not. So she knows something. She has some type of psychic ability to tell if somebody's sick or not or healthy. So the father leaves the child alone for a second to go retrieve some tools so they can install a garbage disposal and some type of supernatural thing happens. What happens exactly? Well, this happens. Look, we have the TV doing this weird thing again. Like, what is that? What? It looks like it matches the wallpaper. Is that supposed to match the wallpaper? We saw that pattern again. Well, you got her attention here. There we go, and she's about to touch it. Some type of communication, I think. Some type of signal or communication. And she's about to poke it and decode it. Her decoding skills are interrupted. <laughs> yeah, turn off the TV. That'll prevent the aliens from signaling her. Oh, what is this? She grabs the box cutter. Well, that's not good. We don't know at this point if she's bad or good. She seems good, but uh, good children don't usually grab box cutters. Yeah, so obviously she knows a lot more than what she's letting on. So back to the beach and the crash site and everything has been completely taken away and cleaned up. We meet Benny. Who is Benny? Nobody's at the crash site except for Benny. Benny is an investigative reporter with the INA. Benny thinks there's something weird going on here. He's suspicious of the NTSB and their quick cleanup job. Benny predicts the report is going to say this crash was an unmanned drone, which obviously it wasn't because there were people on board to this plane. They said in the beginning, they thought about 10 passengers. How does he know that? Well, apparently he has sources. Benny happens to know where the plane took off from. It took off from an island where there is a Homeland Security Research Center. Joe comes back home. We meet Alex, her ex-husband. Alex isn't sure what's going on with this child. Joe asks Piper if she's remembered anything and she kind of deflects at this point. Joe confides in Piper that her mother actually abandoned her when she was a child. Piper tells Joe if she does remember who she is and where she's from, then she has to go away and she doesn't want to go away. She wants to stay. Shortly after that, Joe gets a call and two people who claim to be the girl's parents have showed up at the police station. Of course, Joe is suspicious of these two because she knows baddies are after them. They're able to produce some identification. Apparently they went camping. These guys are baddies. Their story is fishy. So she wants to see pictures of the child on their phones, but of course they don't have any because they're scary bad guys. They're not who they say they are. Oh, lights are going out. Uh oh. And lights have gone out and well, they're they're gone. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. How did they even get out? So the lights went out and they like disappeared completely into thin air. So I, they could have run out, like maybe the electricity had something to do with them disappearing. So like when they use their powers, it trips the circuits of power. <laughs> when you use your powers, it trips the power. I don't know. All right, Joe calls Alex and tells him to get the child and family out of the house as soon as possible. Obviously now the baddies or whoever these people are, are gonna go after her house and they know that she has her who's got like a nice place at the end of Long Island. Joe explains to Piper and the rest of the family what happened at the station with the two mystery parents that aren't really her parents. It's very possible that she's part of some type of government program, some type of weaponized program. I'm feeling very much echoes of Stranger Things-ish type of mystery girl with powers. Meanwhile, Alex thinks that Joe is a little crazy. Oh, the power's gone out. Once again, something's going on. Oh, scary. Oh, scary man in the window. Hey, this is scary. Here come the men in black. Oh no, they're here. Oh man, the guy's got like sketchers. Fake government guys are coming. Now look, for the first time, we get to see a little bit of what happened. The girl's upset and magnets. Magnets! Oh, there goes the dryer and the laundry. Oh, the laundry basket too. That's amazing, the laundry basket stayed on there. Holy crap, she made the dryer go across the room with the laundry basket to stay on there. That is a special power. Oh gosh, they got the girl. And then we have this moment here, which is pretty freaking awesome, but it also kind of reminded me of the Stranger Things 
Remember when Eleven crashed the van? It kind of gave me that moment there, but it wasn't quite as dramatic or awesome, I have to say. Oh, I thought she was gonna crash it. No, she flat out made it explode. Hey, and the kid is okay. Well, of course the kid's okay, because I think the kid crashed the car. Back at the police station, we learned that the fake parents were actually fakes. Now he found this on the guy, which is another figure. It doesn't quite match up what we've seen on the TV in the past, but it's similar. Oh, look, NTSB reached out and said that the plane was a drone, but we know that it was actually like a 10 passenger plane. Something funky's going on in Long Island, and that's more than the usual fun. Joe decides she's not putting Piper in the system, and she's going to keep her, because obviously put in the system, the bad guys find out. The bad guys might be somehow connected to the government. The bad guys, even if they're not connected to the government, they might have people working inside the government that have connections. Turns out Joe wants to know what Benny knows. It turns out the phony government agents acquired a black box and the remains from the crash site. Whoa, she gives Benny that weird decoder card. Piper asks Joe if she thinks that she crashed the plane. I wonder if the people in the plane were actually trying to hurt her and coming after her. So she did crash it, but unintentionally. And she could have survived the plane crash because it's very possible she's indestructible. She survived this huge car crash without a problem. Now here's where some weird things happen. She's brushing her teeth. Well, I was expecting her to make the water go sideways like it did before. She fades into like a white background. So what does that even mean? Like, what is this? What is happening? So maybe she was actually created in some type of water or pod and we learn what the box cutter is for. Ow, she had a chip in her neck. I think this is a tracker, but look, it's the same, it's the same pattern. It's the same code that we've been seeing all along. But if she cuts it out, does she lose her powers? I wonder, I guess we're gonna find out. But the thing is, if it goes down the drain, can they track it down into the water system? Like what if it gets stuck down the drain? Okay, so she wants to cover up that boo-boo. So let's talk about this episode. I am very, very much engaged. I was engaged the whole time. I really didn't have a moment where I was like bored or thinking about anything else because my mind was very fixated on what was happening and trying to figure out why these things are happening. And I like shows like this. I am a huge X-Files fan. As you guys know, if you've watched my Nosferatu reviews, I love trying to figure things out as they go. Now this show, we don't have a book to go on. It's 100% original here. And I kind of like that too, because it just has that little element of suspense. But this is something that we can pick apart and speculate about. I do want to take a second real quick to go like uh, at the, ha I do want to look at the hashtag. If you haven't seen my stupid puppet video, you should, because it's really ridiculous. Who is Piper? It, Piper is actually a dog. That doesn't look anything like Piper. Okay, uh, or, or Piper could be a cat. This is Piper. Piper is a airport dog. That makes sense because she was on a plane and she was chasing birds on the runway and then she went on the plane and then she shape-shifted and she turned into the girl. Oh, there's Piper, finally. Who's Piper? Is Piper is Joe Evans' long lost daughter who got kidnapped as a baby, had a chip planted inside her. She was raised by scientists who used her for an experiment. But when the accident happened, she lost her memories, found her way home. There you go, there's a show. Someone figured out the show. A gifted child, kidnapped, brainwashed, became a military weapon. She's from the upside down. <laughs> She's a regular kid whose parents worked for some secret agency they were doing an experiment that went wrong, gave her powers, the bad guys stole her and put the trackers in her. She started to remember all. She's an alien. It's possible that she's an alien. It's too obvious. I think that's too much of an obvious choice. Anyways, I'm curious to see and hear what you guys think. If you don't follow me on Twitter, you should because, you know, I like to interact with people. So please do. I'm at Larice F. I am an XL fan. I do ridiculous videos for other stuff. Anyways, guys, thank you guys for tuning in. If you like this video, please subscribe. I will have more recaps up soon of this series and potentially a few others. I really feel hopeful that this could be a new interesting series that we could kind of sink our teeth into that'll reveal some really cool stuff. I hope it doesn't peak too soon or I hope it keeps audiences engaged so that it pulls the rating and doesn't get canceled just when you think you're gonna learn about answers. All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap this up. Thanks again for watching and see you guys next time.